Thanks. How are you? I'm so well. All the better for seeing you. I wore this for you. Thank um, you. Be, it's wow. a young Irish designer named Circa O'Reilly. So I wore this for you. Uh, listen, I, I spare your blushes, but I want to begin by just sort of celebrating Lady Gaga with some of these amazing statistics, right? So, the last single, Born This Way, number one in 17 countries, 69 million singles sold, 23 million albums, just the one album, 23 million of them sold, highest grossing tour ever for a debut album, a billion views on YouTube, the most downloaded artist history in history, and according to Time magazine, the fifth most powerful person in the world. <laughs> You're 25! You're 25 years old! Wow. Make me some blessing. You're only 25. 25 I'm, years old! Honestly, I'm just really, really happy to be here. And I, I appreciate... I'm going to, like, start crying. I appreciate so much the support of the UK. And I love you, Gaga. I love you, too. <laughs> I'm sure uh, a lot of people here... A lot of people here have seen uh, the Monster Ball tour. I know Gwyneth's seen the Monster Ball tour. Uh -huh. oh. I gave her my perfume. Yeah. She smelled lovely when she came, but she said, what does that smell like? She smelled so good. So I, I gave said, her what are you Is it your own perfume? No, no, it was a Mugler Womanity perfume. I gave it to her. Mm. Plug. Yeah. <laughs> Case of it free. <laughs> <laughs> I went to, to see it, and I loved all the theatricality and all that, but I was sort of was expecting that. I was expecting the kind of spectacle of it. But the bit that impressed me, and I don't know if it's the same for you guys, the bit that impressed me the most was just you banging away at a piano at the end of the thrust stage, just turning the O2 into, like, a pub gig. It was just incredible. That was did. always my sort of... Uh, ambition was to when I was in small clubs to make them feel like arenas and when I'm in arenas make them feel like yeah. small clubs uh, so uh, and when it comes to the piano the piano is a bit like m an extension of my arm uh, I love to dance but when I'm at the piano it's when I feel the most comfortable I'm a songwriter at heart and I love that still now you can go to clubs in the Lower East Side in New York and you'll see sort of mad out there performance artists which you were one of them. Yeah, well, I still am down there. <laughs> do you still go and do somewhere out there, things yeah. down there, or you just hang out down there? Yeah, no, I go downtown and I'll, you know, I'll, you know, slosh back some whiskey and perform in one of the old clubs I used to always hang out in. And, you know, if you're from New York or wherever you're from, yeah. if you know the area, you know how to go out and have a good time and not uh, cause too much of a ruckus. I cause a ruckus, but, you know, less of a ruckus. <laughs> yeah, the ruckus you want to cause. Yes. Yeah. Good <laughs> but, uh, what I was going to say, famously, you have this incredible rapport with your fans and real, you know, real connection with them. I love, uh, you, I love you, too. <laughs> OK, some cheering and clapping, and that's that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I suppose what interests me is the kind of the one-on-one the -on -one love, because you are dating, aren't you? Dating. Do you have a boyfriend? No, no boyfriend. Oh, you don't have a boyfriend? No, Do you go I'm on dates? I'm miserably pathetic in my wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> Edward, do you go on dates? Can, could somebody ask Lady Gaga out? Um, well, you could. I, I haven't been on any dates recently. I'm working so hard and I just finished my record and um, I don't know. I get really bored very quickly with men. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, okay. <laughs> See, I'm so easy. <laughs> if someone asked you on a date, what would you wear? <laughs> I would imagine they might freak out if I showed up in this wedding. <laughs> <laughs> she seems a little cute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> But we've got to talk about your fans, uh, because they obviously love you, the fans. They're very, very special. And I love and, them. Yeah. And, they're, they're, and that bond you have seems really genuine. But is there a reason why they do this? They film themselves watching your videos. They, yeah, they're awesome. They started a radio station called Radio Art Pop now. You must... Have you come across Mr. Motormouth before? I think I know which one you're... This, yeah, is, the guy, this is the guy... This is, a, this is the first time he watched uh, Applause. Here he is. Oh, I think... Oh, I do. Yes, I do. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, this bitch is flying. <laughs> oh, yes, bitch. <laughs> yes, turn around like that, because this is a bitch. <laughs> she brought back the yellow wig, bitch. <laughs> oh! <laughs> He's amazing. Are you sure? 
sure he's a fan? It's... <laughs> so, it... Well, get this. We thought if he was that excited to watch a video of you, how excited... No, he's not here. Uh... <laughs> how excited would it be if we Skyped him? Right. Yeah, amazing. So I'll just Skype him now. Skyping. <gasps> there he is. <laughs> okay, so hang on. Is that me? Can you see me? Hello? Hi, Graham. How are you, Dwight? I'm very good. <laughs> What's your name? I use Zachary. It's Zachary? Yes. Yeah. Your hair is amazing. Thank you, Dwight. I know a bitch had the flame over me. Okay, so brace yourself, Zachary. Brace yourself, Zachary, because I'm I'm moving the camera. I'm moving the camera. Zachary, here huh? is Lady Gaga. <laughs> Can you see her? Yes, yes bitch! What the hell? <laughs> oh, God! Yes. Peace, that piece and that lace and the sheer and the necklace. Honey, you worked, bitch. You ate that. <laughs> You know, you're so, you're, you're so famous right now. You have no idea. You're all over. You can't tell oh, Where are you? There you are. There you are. There. And is there any little a cappella bit from the new album? Could you do something for him? A little line or something to blow his mind? Sure. Uh, uh, uh. I can't help the way I'm feeling. Uh. Gonna stop love, please take me to your leader. We'll send you a tape. We'll send you a tape, Zachary. We'll send you a tape. Thank you so I much for Skyping us. I love you, Zachary. Us. I love you. I love you. I, wa I, I watch you all the too, time. I love you, baby. In our pop, you look so pure and happy, and I'm so proud of you, baby. I'm so proud of you. Well, thank Aww. you. Bye-bye, Zachary, you lovely man. Bye-bye. Oh, what a nice man. <laughs> no, you're a nice man. I'll tell you why. Because you're giving them a voice, and that's what it, this is all about for me. You just gave him, you gave him his moment. Thank you. Well, he came back, he earned his moment. He earned his moment. He did. Yeah, but that was so okay. cool. Uh, uh, La Streisand, she also visited the set, didn't yes. she? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that, that was incredible. I mean, I, I think I held my breath for 10 minutes while she was there. <laughs> I mean, she is lovely and, you know, she, she's just an incredible woman. And the, the truth is, is throughout her whole career, she really had a hand in every single detail. And I really admire that about her. And when she came on set, she was so lovely and so oh, yeah. warm to all of us. And she watched a little bit of the, you know, earlier edits of the film. And it was, it was spectacular. And we've got a great picture of the two of you together. It's like diva squared. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Was that before? That's before. That's before, yeah. yes. That's wow. the first time you met her, right? Yeah, yeah, we had had dinner together at her house. Yeah, of course you had. This guy's my friend. <laughs> I'm interested, though, because how does this story resonate with you, Lady Gaga? Because you did want to be a star from very little. I, how old are you in this? This looks like someone pretending to be Lady Gaga. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. That is my attempt at Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> yes. How old are you there? I think I must be 10. Wow. 10 but does it, it looks like a Lady Gaga impersonator, doesn't it? It looks like, yeah, it does. it looks like a little girl. I'm being Lady Gaga yeah. for Halloween. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you grew up to be Lady so Gaga. The last time uh, we saw you, it was just the start of A Star is Born, that whole incredible year, that whole incredible journey of that movie. So congratulations. Thank you. Uh, what did you get? An Oscar, Golden Globe, BAFTA four Grammys. The sound I didn't realize the soundtrack album was in the charts for 64 weeks. That's nuts. It's pretty crazy. That sold a lot of records. I was I'm so proud of that whole project and you know also just like making that soundtrack was like just it was my baby, you know. So it's, that's been pretty cool. I've got a picture of you at the Oscars, the night of the Oscars. And so this Diamond. Oh my this, God! I, I that... look, I look just like that right now. It's so weird. <laughs> it's uncanny. <laughs> uh, but that is the diamond. That diamond is in the middle of that breakfast at Tiffany's necklace. Yeah. So that diamond was in uh, a necklace that Audrey wore for press for breakfast at Tiffany's, and then the diamond was put into a different setting. And it's it's this priceless diamond that Tiffany's had, and they they offered it to me to wear at the Oscars, and I was, you know. 
the street kid in me from New York was like, <laughs> hell yeah, I'm going to wear that big thing. <laughs> but does it not kind of wreck your night? Because presumably you've got security guards under each armpit and there's like, there's people crawling all over Graham, you. Graham, I already thought I had too much security before I put that diamond on. And then I put that diamond on and I was like, am I the president? Like, I didn't really know what was going on. And it, it was really funny because I really didn't know what was going to happen that night. I was just excited to be there. You know, that's mostly generally how I feel at these events is like, oh, I'm just happy to be here, right? And so then I won an Oscar and I was so excited and I'm having champagne and I'm drinking. And my sister was my date. So, you know, like we're really barreling through the champagne backstage with the Oscar and I just leave and I, I leave with the diamond on and I, I didn't tell anyone, like I just left and <laughs> Tiffany started freaking out. They were like, she's gone, she, she left with the diamond. And actually I went to go hang out with Madonna at her manager's house and I got to the house and I was, I was just chilling with Madonna while like all these security guards were like, <laughs> just side-eyeing me from, you know, every corner of the room. And every time I hugged someone, they, they would like, like get a little closer to make sure it was still on. And then, and then I left and I really wanted to go to Taco Bell. So we were trying to go to Taco Bell. And then all of a sudden the car got pulled over by Tiffany's security. And it was very politely moved, removed from my neck. Your dad runs restaurants, right? Uh, he does run a restaurant, yeah, and he runs a chicken restaurant as well, but the, his main restaurant is called Joanne. It's on the Upper West Side in New York, and uh, it's one. It's so funny listening to you talk about this, because my father's like, just put a fucking artichoke on it. And so <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I love you so much, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, his family, my grandparents, grew up in New Jersey. Mm. So uh, everything was sort of inspired by Italian-American food uh, in Jersey, in Atlantic City, uh, in Hoboken. And uh, I, I grew up eating that way, and I love it. It's, it's so amazing growing up in a family where there's cooking. And I feel like I grew up in a culture of plenty, which was it's kind of the opposite. There was yeah. so much food on the table. And my father used to look at me, and he used to go, finish that. And I was sitting there so full as a child. I'm like, Dad, why are you making me finish this? I'm going to vomit on the table. But I, but I have to say, um, I have so much respect for what you do and also so much respect for my father. And I think it's beautiful that we live in a world where all these things can take place at once. Uh, um, my father's uh, restaurant was named after his sister who died when she was 19. So mm. it's really near and dear to my family. Uh, Joanne died of lupus uh, in 1974. And generational trauma is a thing. And also food can uh, feed our souls. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And not know. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> um, um, we've got a picture of you. I think, is this in? This is the, not Joanne. This is the other restaurant. Oh, yeah, this is... <laughs> Working hard. My father also sells fried chicken, and I like to work behind the bar. Is that in Grand Central? It's in Grand Central Station, and that's Art Smith behind me, and I'm making a beer for someone. Of course you are. And yeah. I don't know why there's ice in that beer, other than that I might have had too much beer that day. <laughs>